Okay, I wanted to do a little, hopefully fairly short video here, um, because there were some things that, that, that bothered me about a debunking video done by someone called Stand Up Math. Debunking of Dr., uh, I hope I say his name right, uh, Shriva Ayodhuray. I don't know if I've got that right or not. For some reason, I'm trying to put, a, put an accent in there. I'll just call him Dr. Shriva from this point on. Anyway, there was a video that, uh, uh, that Dr. Shriva did that was uh, more than an hour long, and it was an analysis of four um, Michigan counties and how their precincts uh, voted uh, with some metrics applied that, that sort of uh, led to some potential uh, conclusions and uh, it, it, was, it was interesting. And after that was done, since the conclusions were pro-Trump, uh, immediately there are debunkings of that. And stand up, Math did his debunking. And that debunking, I think, fell very short, very flat, and in fact, did absolutely nothing whatsoever. And I think it was, uh, I think it was even a bit devious. So this video is to explain that. And in all fairness, uh, I, I think it's safe to assume that uh, someone will debunk this. So expect more debunkings. Now, just a couple of notes. I've just got a few slides, and the rest of this is going to be me talking. Um, and I'm not going to be using the actual data uh, because I don't have access to it. And if I did, the, the painstaking uh, plotting of it, I just, what I'm showing you is in essence for the purpose of what I'm going to do here is totally acceptable, but it is not the actual data. It shows the same shapes and the same curves and the same gist. But the actual data, I will give links to, uh, to both Dr. Uh, Shriva's uh, video as well as Stand Up Maths. So you can stack what I'm saying here up against what, uh, what both of them are saying as well. So let's dig in. What Dr. Shriva did was he plotted in a particular county all of the precincts and, and they were plotted on an XY graph where the uh, X axis, as you go from left to right, is increasing percent of those uh, in that precinct who voted on a straight party Republican ticket. So that said, if we look at the precincts on this graph, and again, this is not the actual data. As a matter of fact, this point probably wouldn't even be in the actual data. Uh, well, actually, none of these would, but, but this is the sort of the cloud that is in the data. So if we look over to the left here, this is where there were very, very few uh, straight Republican uh, Party tickets voted. And... Uh, keep in mind that this is Michigan. In Michigan, you can vote straight party. I'm from Georgia. I can't do that here. If I want to vote a straight party ticket, I go down the ticket and I vote straight, 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 straight. I vote for my party top to bottom. I have to do it each race. In Michigan, you can go straight party. So, straight party increases as we go left to right. The y-axis, I'm going to call it something different than what Dr. Shriva calls it, because I think what he calls it has maybe led to a little bit of confusion. I'm just going to sort of uh, put that in an Erlmeyer flask and boil it down to its essence. And what that essence is, it is the deviation in the number of people who voted straight party Republican, but then decided to vote for Trump for president, which means, in essence, it wasn't a straight party. So in other words, as we get, as we're up here in the higher region, 
on individual Trump votes. This is 10%, 10% minus 20 plus 20. What, what we basically see is, is that in this area, anything above this 0% line is where you get more people voting individually for Trump than you would expect based upon straight party uh, affiliation. As you move down in this y-axis, you start to see people or you start to see ballots that are deviating negatively from what you would expect to see based upon straight party voting. So what does that mean? Well, basically it means this, and this is where I think you have to ask some questions. For some reason, as Republicans in this particular county, and, and, and again, this is just the general shape, but as, as Republicans in this county are found in higher concentrations of Republicanism, a higher percentage of those Republicans are voting non-compliant with the Republican ticket. Let me, let me say that again, and it's important to understand I'm saying a higher percentage. It's obvious that a higher number would vote. In, in other words, if you have 10% Republicans over here, and let's say 2% of them vote for Biden, yeah, 2%, but that's a small number because it's 2% of only 10%, so it's, it's a small number. But you get over here where you have 60 and 70% Republicans, well, you would, you would still expect there to be a higher number arithmetically because, well, they're more Republicans. And you would kind of figure it would probably be about 2% again because it's 2 per, this, the Republicans over here were 2% for Biden and the Republicans over here, well, why are they 20% for Biden? So... Um, I may not have explained that quite as well as I should, but that's not really the, the important thing. The important thing to remember here is that the graph shows that there, that there are more and more and more Republican uh, votes that are turning for Trump as you get into more and more and more Republican uh, precincts. And this is expressed as a percent not an arithmetic value. All right, so this is what um, Stand Up Math did. He looked at this and he said in his accent, what if, what if we did this? What if we took, or if we took the, the, the Biden votes and did the exact same thing? What do you think would happen? Okay, so he took the same precincts in a county and did this. All right, so what do we see? Looks like the same thing, doesn't it? So what he was implying, I believe, and I watched his video, uh, basically he was implying that it's the same thing, so there's nothing to see here. Well, really? You think so? I'm going to tell you why he's absolutely dead wrong on that. And let's just compare those two graphs side by side. Okay, here's Joe Biden. Here's Donald Trump. Again, these are not the real values. I just took my, my mouse and, and made dots. You can, I will give you the links where you can see the actual values. So it sort of looks like, well, the same thing happened to Joe Biden that happened to Donald Trump. So I, I don't see where anybody was treated differently here. I don't see where there's anything the least bit unfair. But let's think about it just a little bit. To begin with, I think there is a, a mistake that we tend to make when we view two charts like this or two plots like this side by side. And that is, we tend to think that, that um, 
uh, th that maybe the precincts are, are all lined up left to right in the same precinct order as here. And that is just simply not the case. What uh, Stand Up Math did, essentially, instead of having individual Trump votes on his y-axis, he had individual Biden votes. Instead of the uh, straight party Republican on his x-axis, he had straight party Democrat. So if you look at this and you don't think about it, you might go, I guess Dr. Schriever was just full of beans. It's the same thing. There's no difference between Biden and Trump. The election was completely and totally fair in this Michigan county. But actually, these two charts are showing the exact same problem. And here's why. I will use a data point over here to the far right and lower right in the Joe Biden chart. What would this be? This would be a precinct right here that voted heavily straight party Democrat, but that Donald Trump took some votes away in. So where would this dot appear on the Donald Trump chart? It would be right here. It wouldn't be down here. It would be in Donald Trump's upper left portion of his uh, cloud of precincts. So if we take a spot over here, let's take this one way up here. And again, these are make-believe, but the general shape is the same. Let's take this one way up here. What would this represent? Well, this is a precinct that did not vote straight party Democrat. And probably because of that, it was more Republican and voted more straight party Republican. And it was a precinct in which Joe Biden way outperformed in comparison to what you would expect from the straight party voting data. So where would this point appear on Donald Trump's chart? It would be down here. So really, while these charts look like they're the same thing, what, this is what's actually happened. The x-axis right here has been redefined as the negative of the x-axis here. But the y-axis has also been redefined as the opposite of the y-axis here. The net result of this is the chart has simply been rotated 180 degrees. So I, I can't do that here for you, but if you took this chart and you took this corner and rotated it around to right here, this is what you get. So the plots are absolutely showing the exact same thing. And that is that for some reason, and we'll, we can express it in two different ways, we can say for some reason Donald Trump in higher Republican precincts lost a higher percentage of votes than he did in lower Republican precincts as that percentage is expressed as a total of Republican votes, both individual votes and straight party votes. So how do we express that same thing over here? Well, if Trump lost more votes than he was expected to lose in a high Republican precinct, that means Joe Biden gained more votes than he was expected to gain in the same high Republican precinct. So this quadrant up here is actually this quadrant down here. This quadrant is this quadrant, and these two corners remain empty, and that's what throws you, because this corner 
is this corner and this corner is that corner. So I think that was what, and, and be honest with you, when I, when I watched uh, Stand Up Math's video, I was going, oh my goodness, I, I just, how did I, how did I buy that uh, Dr. Uh, Shriva's, how did, how did I think that that made any sense at all? Because obviously something's wrong here. These, these graphs are absolutely, they show that the same thing happened to Biden that happened to Trump. No, it doesn't. <laughs> this is a complete and 100% confirmation of what Dr. Shriva was uh, putting forth in his plots. So finally, this means we have to ask a couple questions. And I'm not going to answer them. I'm just going to ask them. Why would a higher percentage of Republican voters in Republican precincts vote for Biden? Just ask that question to yourself. Why would the percentage of non-compliant Republicans increase as Republicanism increases? Why would a Republican in a Democrat precinct exhibit more party loyalty than a Republican that is surrounded by like-minded voters? I will answer a little bit about this. It is my contention that when people are surrounded by people who think more like them in their own communities, that tends to be... A tends to uh, provide some confirmation bias and to make one feel even stronger and more confident in their beliefs uh, about politics and the world around them. So it doesn't make sense to me personally that a Republican in a Democrat precinct should be more loyal to the Republican Party than a Republican in a Republican precinct. And remember, we're not talking arithmetic values here. Uh, I know that if you have 80% Republicans, you're going to get a higher arithmetic value of those who vote for Trump than if you have 8% Republicans. What is important here is the percent, because percentages tell you more about the mindset of a group than arithmetic values will. So anyway, uh, by the way, I will give you both uh, links to, to both of these videos. I'm not going to be leaving comments open on this. I usually do when I do something like this, but I'm not going to do it. And, and, and the reason is simple. Uh, I will get suckered into spending too much time trying to answer comments. If you think I'm an idiot, tell all your friends I'm an idiot. If you think this makes sense, then, you know, that take it to heart and, 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 and figure it out for yourself. But I, I think it's important that we understand that what Stand Up Math did completely confirms the same data that uh, Dr. Shriva was putting forth. And, and because these charts look like they're the same shape, you would say the same thing happened to Joe Biden that happened to Donald Trump. Uh, that would only be true if the way we defined our X and Y axes remained the same. And it doesn't. So the, the net effect is what, uh, what uh, Stand Up Math did was just redefine the, the axes in such a way that it flipped the chart around 100 rotated, rather, the plot around 180 degrees. Go take a look at his video again. <clears throat> You'll see that's exactly uh, what has taken place. So, hey, thanks for watching, and uh, please don't leave a comment, because I'm not going to let you.